Hello my dear friends, welcome back to the DSA class. Now let me tell you, before we go to any complex algorithms or problems which we are going to solve, let's first warm up the system by tackling some simpler problems, right? And one of the most basic programs which you must and should know is how to write a program to calculate the factorial of a number. Now whenever we speak about calculating factorial, there are two approaches one can use. The first approach is called as the iterative approach. The second approach is called as the recursive approach. Now what is the difference you might ask? Well, it's very simple. Whenever you hear this word iterative, there is another word which must follow it, which is nothing but loops. If you use loops to calculate the factorial of a number, then you're using the iterative approach because iteration means looping. The second approach, recursion, means you are making a function call itself. And whenever you use the concept of a function calling itself to calculate the factorial of a number, then you're using the recursive approach, right? But in this class, I'm only going to show you the iterative approach and not the recursive approach because recursion is a concept which we will be looking at in great detail separately. There are many things about recursion I will be teaching you, but for the time being, let us look at the iterative approach, which is the most basic approach. Now, let us look at what do you mean by a factorial? I'm sure many of you already know it, but if you go back to your school days and you just try to recollect what is meant by a factorial, it's very simple. Let us assume I want to calculate three factorial. How will you calculate three factorial? Very simple. All you have to do is this, which is one into two into three which means start from one, go till the number itself, multiply all of those numbers together. That gives you the factorial. Similarly, let us assume you want to calculate five factorial. How will you calculate five factorial? This is how you'll calculate. One into two into three into four into five is five factorial. Similarly, if you want to calculate eight factorial, this is how it looks like. So it's quite simple, right? So what I'm going to do is in my program, I'm going to create a function called as factorial which is going to take a number from the user and return its factorial as the output. So what I will do is to take input from the user as to which numbers factorial he or she wants to find, I'm going to create a variable called as n like this, right? And initially, let us assume n's value is five. So what should your program ultimately do? Ultimately, it should find five factorial. And how will it find five factorial? Start from one go to the number itself and find their product, correct? Now to do this, what I will do is ultimately to store the factorial of the number, which in this case is five, I am going to create a variable called as res or short for result. And initially, if you notice the value of result is one. Now you might be thinking, why is it one? Well, it's very simple guys. The least value that a factorial of a number can have is one because one factorial is one. Did you know zero factorial is also one? Now, if you're interested, you can go and Google about the math behind why zero factorial is evaluating itself to one. It's very interesting. Go check it out. Now, some of you will be thinking, oh, what if I have negative values? Well, again, I don't want to deep dive into the mathematical uh, derivations behind what a negative factorial is. All I can tell you is that it will be a complex number. The only difference between a negative factorial and a positive factorial is in a positive factorial, the imaginary part is always zero. If you understood, great. If you did not understand, even better. Because good news for you is nobody is going to ask you to write a factorial program which will take into consideration the negative cases. Don't worry about it. Let's stick to positive. But you must understand zero factorial is also one. One factorial is also one, which means the minimum value should, at least the initial value should be one. Would you agree with me? So how are we going to proceed? Well, it's very simple. First of all, I want this one to five, these numbers to be generated. How will I do that? For that, let me just remove these multiplication symbols. All I will do is I'm going to create a loop. In the loop, I will initialize the i value to be one. And I will ask this loop to keep looping till i value reaches five or in this case, whatever is the n value, or in general, till n. Now, you know how to write a simple loop like this. Then what I will do is, whatever is the current i value, I will take that, multiply with the existing value of result. That is what I'm going to do. So see, i value, result value, I will just multiply them together. Whatever is the multiplied result, that 
I am going to update it as the new result. So I'll store it back inside result. Now you are within a loop. Obviously, I value will increment from 1, it is going to become 2. Same process. Take the I value, take the existing result value, multiply both of them together. 1 into 2 is nothing but 2. And once you get 2 like this, that is the value you must update to result. That is what I'm doing. You're within a loop. I value proceeds. It goes to 3. Take the I value, take the result value, multiply them together. 2 into 3 is 6. And that is what you should be storing. Move the I value forward. Multiply them together. 6 into 4 is nothing but 24, right? Update that as your new result value. And that is what I am also showing. 24, store it back inside result. Similarly, move I value forward and it becomes 5. All you have to do next is multiply I into the existing value of result. 24 into 5 you will get, which is nothing but 120. Take 120, update it into result. Because you have designed the loop in such a way that it goes from 1 till n, after this, the loop will exit. And at the end of the looping, your result will have the factorial of the number which the user gave you, which you have to just return it and print it if required. As simple as that. Now, what we have to do is, we have to just go and write the code for it. So, first, let us go and write the code in Java. So, watch it. This is my editor. I have my main function ready. I have a class called as factorial. So what I will do is I will go inside this and I am going to first take input from the user. For that always scanner should be prepared and kept. That's what I am doing. Scanner type yes, see, equal to new scanner. I'll tell you. And always you know system dot in stream should always be passed as input. Cool. This is done. Also let's just import the scanner so that we don't get any errors as such. So I'll just go there and I will tell import java.util.scanner class. So a C I will add to scanner. <clears throat> Any confusion? Wonderful. Now let's come back in the next line. You want to take n as input from the user. So what I will do is I'll just go tell scan.nextint. And uh, I'm going to store this within a variable which is n and naturally n has to be of type integer. Clear till here. Now, this n must be passed to a function. Now, where is that function? Let's create it. So, I will go above the main method and there I am just going to leave a couple of lines space and there I will just tell maybe like this. Uh, I want it to be a function which I can call without object creation. So, naturally it has to be static. So, I will tell static. And uh, obviously, this is a function which is going to return the factorial which is going to be an integer value. So I'll tell int. And name I'll call it as fact, F-A-C-T, because the class name we have already used it as factorial. Now, this is going to collect a va value n. So I'll just collect it in a local variable. I'll call it as int n like this, right? And if you're revising, you know, you can have this also as n, this also as n, because after all, this is the local variable of the factorial method. This is the local variable of the main method. Their scopes are different and hence clash will just not happen. Now inside that, it's time for us to create this variable called as result whose initial value is 1. So that is what I will do, int res equal to 1. Clear till here. Next, what I'm going to do is a uh, loop is what I have to create. So I'll tell for and inside that I'll create my looping variable which is i. So I'll tell int i. Initially its value should be 1, right? And I will tell hey i, keep going forward till your value is less than or equal to n. So I will tell less than or equal to n. One by one i's value should increment every iteration. Inside that I'm just going to go and what you have to do is take the existing value of i, multiply it with result, store it back in result. So that's what I'm going to do. res equal to res into i, I will tell. As simple as that. A shorter way to write this would be just in the shorthand I'm writing is res into equal to i, like this. So I hope you understand it's the same. Please leave space on the left and right of the operators. Yeah. Till here, I hope I'm clear. Next, once I come out of the loop, result will have the factorial and that is what I'll return. So I'll just tell return res. Wonderful. Next, I'll come down and uh, in this uh, main function, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to call this function call as fact and I will pass n to it. It's going to return the factorial. You can collect it in a variable, all that, but I would just rather prefer to directly print it. 
So, I will just put it within system dot out dot println. Out dot println and I will tell. That is it. Will this work? Most definitely. Let us go execute and check it out. So, if I take you to my execution window, then just observe all of you. I will just go here and I am going to put the relevant command. So, I will just compile it first java c factorial dot java is the name of the file. I will press enter compilation is uh, not successful because public spelling is wrong b is missing let us just go fix that right. So, I will go here and this as you can see public b is missing here. So, I will just go put b there. Yeah. Oh, cool. Now, I will go back I have saved it. Now, if in case I just go and if I just put in the relevant command and if in case I compile it then compilation is successful let us execute it java space factorial and uh, if in case I do this and if I press enter then as you can see it is waiting for the end value I will put it as 5. If I put it as 5 you can notice correctly you have got 120 and you can test it out with variety of other inputs certainly it would work. Any confusion till here my dear friend? So, I hope till this point of time things are crystal clear and this is the most basic program you can write and it is the iterative approach.